Hey friends, so where should you put your money? Should you max out your pensions if you can? Or maybe you should put as much as possible into your ISA. Or maybe it's lifetime ISA. Maybe because of my recent pension videos, I have been asked these questions a lot. So in this video, we'll talk about what is actually the best strategy. But before we dive in, a quick reminder, I am not a financial advisor. So if you need any personalized advice, please consult a qualified professional. Let's start here. All three options are actually tax advantage accounts, but they operate differently and how they behave with taxes is one of the biggest differences between them. Let's start with ISA and lifetime ISA. And for people that don't know, a lifetime ISA is actually a type of an ISA account. With ISAs, you have to invest after paying all the taxes. That means that you invest from your take home pay. That is after the money has actually hit your bank account. But after you have invested and hopefully it has grown, when you want to withdraw, irrespective of the growth or how much it has grown and all of that, you don't pay any single tax. You pay taxes before the money hits your account, but you don't pay tax on any growth as a result of the investment in that ISA account. But with pensions, it's different. You're able to invest your money before you pay any income tax. Or in some cases, if you've paid tax, you get back that income tax that you've paid directly into your pension. But when it's time to withdraw, with the current rules, you can withdraw up to 25% tax free, but the rest will be subject to tax at the time of withdrawal. We also have something that is called lifetime allowance, which at the time of this recording, this is September 2024, by the way, it has actually been cancelled. But who says subsequent governments or even this recent Labour government won't reinstate it? The lifetime allowance simply states that your pension will be taxed at a higher rate after you have accumulated up to a certain amount. Before it was cancelled, that amount was set at over a million pounds. That means that if your pension pot grew beyond this amount, you will be hit with a hefty tax bill, up to 55%. Pensions, ISAs and lifetime ISA have different limits with regards to how much you can put in. With ISAs, you can contribute up to £20,000 per tax year. This allowance is combined across all your ISA accounts, including the lifetime ISA. But the maximum you can actually contribute to a lifetime ISA or LISA is actually £4,000 per tax year, while the government will give you an additional 25% bonus for every amount that you contribute. The catch to that is that you only have to use this money either to buy your first property or for retirement and you can't access it without a penalty until you're 60 or buying your first property. In my opinion, this account is great if you know you want to buy your first home and that's it. For pensions, as of today, the our contribution limit is either 100% of your earnings or £60,000, whichever is lower. If you have been unable to contribute to pensions in previous, I think, three years, you can even use the carry forward rule to make up for those missed years, potentially adding more into your pots. And this makes pensions very, very powerful. Now, if you think pensions are already overpowered, look at this your employer is obligated to contribute to your pensions also in addition to what you're contributing and the minimum that your employer can actually contribute is three percent and the minimum for you as an individual is five percent making it a total of eight percent with this minimum contribution from your employer you are actually getting 60 percent top up which is massive especially when you consider that the government is giving you just 25% in your life and you get 0% when you contribute through a normal ISA account. And some employers would even contribute more than the minimum of 3%. While this is massive, you can't access the money in your pensions 
till you're 55 which is going to 57 from 10 to 28 and if you're in your 20s or 30s you're looking at decades before you can touch this money and who says the government won't push up that age limit simply because we are living longer today and that age is usually tied to the state pension age that the government bankrolls so it's all in the government's favor to actually push that up before we get to that age while this might seem like a downside it's actually a great way to ensure that your retirement savings remains untouched and continue to grow for years and years the flip side is if you want to retire earlier than the pension age let's say you want to retire at 40 you will need the flexibility of the isa account this is why people just contribute the minimum to get that employer match and then invest the rest in a stocks and shares isa to give them flexibility as time goes so which one is the best for you it all comes down to your financial goals if you want flexibility tax-free growth easy access a stocks and shares ISAs might be the way to go and if you're planning to buy your first home nothing beats the lifetime ISA if you're actually eligible but if you're looking to maximize your retirement savings and benefit from the highest potential contribution and tax relief then pensions are very very hard to beat as you can see you don't necessarily have to choose one that's the catch here you can use a combination of all of these options to create a strategy that matches your goal the key is to know what you're aiming for whether it's buying a home saving for retirement or just maximizing your tax efficiency you can choose accordingly based on all the options and i'm going to share my own strategy right but this is not financial advice personally the first step for me is to either take advantage and maximize my employer contribution or invest a minimum of 10 percent which includes my employer contribution in a workplace pension as long as i am working in fact investing 10 percent in any workplace pension i am part of is actually a part of my own personal money rules I can't do lower than 10%. And that means, for example, if my employer is a lot more generous and decides to match any contribution I make up to 7%, that is a total of 14%, right? According to that first step, I will choose to maximize that and get the 14% because it is higher than the 10%. But if I'm getting the minimum, I will top that up to 7% to make sure that it gets up to 10%. To satisfy my money rule that's the first step i hope that makes sense the second step is to invest any surplus in a stocks and shares isa so my first step is pensions because of the massive boost that i get from there and then any surplus i put that in the stocks and shares I, I, for my stocks and shares isa i currently use vanguard and trading 212 and i buy a mix of global index funds specific etfs and specific company accounts in this video, I show the 5 ETFs that actually beat the S&P 500 and I mentioned some of the ETFs I bought. But this is just my personal opinion. Don't take this as advice. The truth is, there is no one-size-fits-all answer here. But understanding how each of these options works will help you to make the best choice for your future. If you are unsure about which direction to take, don't hesitate to actually seek professional advice it's actually worth their money in gold in this regard if you have a pension make sure you actually watch this video so you don't lose a whooping 180 000 pounds until next time see you at the next one